I'm about to show you how to build this. A beautiful how-to blog post design built with absolutely no code using Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect in WordPress. Let's jump into it. Tony Lewis with Thrive Themes here, and before we get started, if you like web design, online marketing, and business building in WordPress, hit the subscribe button because here at Thrive Themes, that's pretty much the only thing that we like to talk about. Now, how-to blog posts are amazing pieces of content that pretty much anyone with a website can benefit from writing. I mean, think about it. How many times have you ever looked up something in Google with your prompt beginning with how to? You know, how to lose weight, how to get rid of acne, how to get a six pack, how to grow my YouTube channel. A good how-to blog post that's specific to your niche and area of expertise can be a great piece of content that can help you rank better in Google and can ultimately help you get more leads and sales. Perfect, so the structure for a how-to blog post is going to look something along the following lines. We're going to have a title, and then we'll have a short intro paragraph that is going to serve as the hook. Then we'll have our actual step-by-step -step procedure revealing how to solve the problem that this piece of content is addressing. And ideally, if we can have visuals go along with the text throughout these steps, that would be awesome. And then we're going to wrap it up with a conclusion and a call to action to have people either purchase our product or service, or at the very least, we'll ask them to opt in into our newsletter. Great, so I'm going to operate under the assumption that you already have a website up and running. You know, you've already built a header, a footer, and are simply ready to start creating your how-to blog post. The first thing that I'm going to do is use Thrive Theme Builder to create a new type of custom post template. And we're going to do this so that if we ever wanna create another how-to blog post a little bit down the road, we already have a template that we can start working from. Awesome, so as you can see, I'm in the back end of Thrive Theme Builder. And what I want to do is navigate over to my template section. Here, what I want to do is create a new type of custom post template. All right, so what we're gonna do is click on this add new button and let's give it a descriptive name. So we're going to call it how to. It's going to be a single post type and it's just going to be standard. And technically speaking, we could choose a template to start working from. In fact, let's actually do that because this is going to save us a little bit of time. And we can just pick one that kind of resembles the one that we're going after, the, the design that we're trying to go after. So for example, this one actually matches kind of a lot what we're trying to go after, right? We have the right hand sidebar that WP Beginner has on their website, a title, some breadcrumbs, share buttons. This is actually kind of what we're really going after. So this is going to be an awesome starting point for us. Let's click on create template. Perfect. And now that our template has been created, we can now proceed to edit it to make sure that it just looks a little bit closer to what we're going after. Awesome. So as you can see, we have something going on here, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got a, you know, our website header, um, the template that we've just installed, although we have the sidebar showing up on the left-hand column, we're going to switch that over to the right-hand column in a second. And we have what uh, appears to be the content area, right? So we have the um, text that's going to serve as our main article title, then some information about the author, uh, breadcrumbs, and uh, share buttons here. And then we'll actually have the post content here, right underneath the share buttons. And we're going to be editing this with Thrive Architect later on. And then we simply have some some call to actions to navigate some privy to previous and, and following content as well. And then of course, whatever footer you've enabled on your website is the one that's going to be showing up by default here at the very bottom. Cool, so the first thing that I wanna do is take this sidebar over to the right-hand column. And so this is as simple as just telling Thrive Theme Builder, hey, make sure that you set the position of this sidebar to be on the right. And this is, you know, just by making that switch, this is already kind of starting to look a whole lot more like the WP Beginner website. So um, I'm not gonna spend too much time making my header look like the one from WP Beginner, but what I do wanna do is, um, WP Beginner has a top banner right underneath their header that says, you know, this is a beginner's guide for WordPress. You can start your, Word, your WordPress blog in minutes. Let's actually try to replicate that here inside our main theme. So if I open up this content wrapper toggle, you can see that I, technically speaking, have the option of enabling a top section. Let's make this visible. Now, my top section is showing up in green. Uh, I think WP Beginner is uh, orange. Yeah, it's orange. So I'm gonna stick it, uh, I'm gonna stick to green as my main primary color because that is technically our main primary color here at Thrive Themes. Um, you would on your end uh, make this color whatever your primary color is for your brand. But yeah, let's try to make this a little bit um, shorter. 
and try to make this look a little bit closer to that of what Dolly P Beginner has going on on their website. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just get rid of this text. We only need one line of text. And by the, uh, you know, that automatically is going to make my top section shorter. And I can probably get rid of this line spacing that my main title has. And that already brings down the top section. Um, you know, it, it's making it a whole lot more shorter as well. I think I want to make this an H4 instead of an H3. Again, let's bring down the line spacing. And here we can just do beginner's guide for WordPress. Some space and start your WordPress blog in minutes. Personally, I really like using emojis, so I'm gonna to try to look for an arrow, and I am going to use this arrow as a visual to let people know that this is actually a call to action. Perfect, I'm gonna make this text smaller just so that it fits all in one line. Okay, and this is already starting to look a whole lot more like what WP Beginner has going on there on their end. I'm gonna make the text white, we do want this string of text, start your WordPress blog in minutes to be smaller than the main call to action, which is, you know, or the main title for this call to action, which is beginner's guide for WordPress. Um, so let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's turn 16. Yeah, that's much better. And let's make this bold. And if you take a closer look, but, uh, WP Beginner it has actually a little bit of text shadow behind the main title for this section. So let's actually add in a little bit of text shadow. Yeah, that actually looks pretty cool. Beginner's Guide for WordPress. Start your WordPress blog in minutes. And we have a main call to action here. Perfect. I kind of really like this. Awesome. Now, if I close down the, the main control panel here on our left, you can see that my content by default is already nicely tied up in 1280 pixels of width which is about the same width that WP Beginner has going on on their end. So I kind of really like this by default. What I do want to make sure I get done is I do want a little bit more space in between my side part and the main content area. So let's go ahead and actually add in a little bit of gutter width here. If we use our breadcrumbs and we navigate over to content wrapper, you'll notice how we have 20 pixels of gutter width. Let's actually make this 60. And this is automatically going to add in a whole lot more space in between my right hand column, which is the sidebar and my left hand column, which is my main content area. Now, something that WP Beginner is doing is they have the background color of this page be some, some tone of gray. So let's actually try to use gray as our main background color. And then we'll have the content boxes for our sidebar and the content boxes for our main content area be white. I think that's going to make us, um, have a much closer look to what, uh, WP Beginner has going on on their end. Perfect. So I'm going to make the main background color for my main content wrapper gray. Awesome. And then I'm going to make my main content area be white. I'm going to do the same thing for my sidebar. And boom, this is starting to look a whole lot more closer to what, De to what WP Beginner has going on. Let's make our main content area have a little bit of rounded borders. I think we're going to be fine with 10 pixels. And let's do the same for our sidebar. Excellent. I think that the last thing that we want to do is add in a little bit of color to our borders. And I'm thinking we want to do one pixel all around. Now let's bring the opacity of this border down. Maybe like 15. Excellent. Yeah, this is making my content area stand out a little bit more. Let's do the same thing for our sidebar. All right, we're going to do one pixel all around. And bring down the opacity to 15. Great. Our sidebar is starting to look a whole lot more closer to what WP Beginner is, is doing. Now, WP Beginner is actually splitting up their sidebar into multiple content boxes. I'm going to keep it the same just for the sake of making it a little bit different. But what I do like that WP Beginner is doing is they have a lot of uh, internal paddings, which makes it look like the text here is not so much so closer to the main content box that it's sitting on top. So what I'm going to do is add in a little bit of internal padding to this content here. 
let's, for example, let's do 40 pixels to the left and 40 pixels to the right. And this is automatically giving me some more breathing room on the edges of this content area. Perfect. Now, here is what we have so far. We have our main title, information about the author, some share buttons, and then we will have our main post content. We are missing breadcrumbs. I thought we had breadcrumbs, but we don't. So let's actually look for some breadcrumbs. Here are the breadcrumbs. Let's actually drag them on top of our main title. I'm not a huge fan of this character for breadcrumbs, so let's actually change this to an arrow in a similar way to what LAB Beginner has going on. And to be honest, I'm kind of happy with this, but I do want to change my profile picture so that it's actually rounded. I want my profile picture to display as a circle. So let's come here to borders and corners and let's set the borders to 100 pixels. It looks much cleaner. Great, so now we have breadcrumbs, we have a title, we have some information about the author, call to action to let people share the article around, and this is where our main content is going to be sitting on. Then we have some call to actions to read some more text, and in my opinion, we are missing a very important element, which is comments. So let's look for comments. We're going to be using Thrive comments, and let's just drop them right above the main call to actions to read some more text. We are going to be taking a closer look at comments later on, but for the time being, let's just leave them here. Excellent. So now that we have a very clean looking how to blog post template, we just need to find some content to fill it up with. So let's actually do that. Let's create a new blog post and let's fill it up with some content to see what the end result can look like. Perfect. I'm going to create a new post and let's just give this name, how to start your WordPress blog in 2023, beginner's guide. Now, before we move forward and start working with Thrive Architect, let's just make sure that the post format is set to standard as this is the type of blog post that we've created. Just double check that you don't have video or audio post enabled and that it's just set to standard. And then we can just save this as a draft and open it up with Thrive Architect. Now by default, Thrive Architect is going to have your post inherit the default post uh, design that you have enabled on your website. So we just need to make sure that we tell Thrive Architect, hey, make sure that the post template that you're using is how to, which is the one that we just created. And here you can see that we have a working header. Our main top section has been enabled. I did forget to add a link, but you know, you would probably link either this string of text or maybe the whole string of text to, to you know, the beginner's guide for WordPress. And here we have our breadcrumbs, uh, a main title. I'm thinking that this is a little bit too big, so we may want to change this. Um, some info about the author, some share buttons, and our main post content is going to go here. All right, I've gone back to my template settings and made this title smaller because it was triggering my OCD. So now that, now that it's smaller, we can start working with Thrive Architect and actually start building out our blog post. So here, what I typically like doing is create, um, you know, dropping in a content box. Um, we are going to be getting rid of these internal paddings just to make sure that the text stretches out to the full width of the main content wrapper. And now we can just start typing in some text. Cool. So do you want to start your WordPress block the right way? We know that starting a block can be a terrifying thought, especially when you're not geeky. Guess what? You're not alone. We've helped over 400,000 people, users create a blog. We have decided to create a step-by-step -step guide on how to start a WordPress blog for beginners. I mean, can you tell how WP Beginner is not only addressing the main problem that this piece of content is, is trying to tackle, trying to solve for people, but it's also setting up themselves as a really big authority in the space. This is a great intro uh, text that, that you can definitely learn from. Awesome. And now it's just a question of continuing to build out our how-to blog post. Perfect. So now that we have a working template with a header, some share buttons, breadcrumbs, and a layout that we're overall happy with, we can then proceed to fill it up with some content using Thrive Architect. Now, remember with Thrive Theme Builder, we are creating the theme for our website. That means that we get to create our header, footer, blog design, blog post design, sidebars. But with Thrive Architect, we actually get to design the content inside each of these elements. For example, right now, we're about to design the content of our how to blog post template that we have just created with Thrive Theme Builder. Let me just go ahead and speed run through this for you guys.
Now, to wrap it up, the last thing that you probably want to do is have a solid comment section where people can drop in questions about your guide. I personally like using Thrive Comments as it takes your WordPress comment section and it turns it into a fun forum like discussion. Plus, it also does a really good job of preventing spammy comments from coming through, which is also great, never hurts. And as it happens, Thrive Comments is available alongside Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect when you sign up for Thrive Suite, so you may want to check that out. And that's about how easy it is to build out a nice how-to template that you can just use over and over again for all of your how-to pieces of content. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give me a massive thumbs up. And one last thing before you leave, if you need access to Thrive Architect, Thrive Theme Builder, or Thrive Commons, be sure to click the link down in the description box to go to our website to learn more about our conversion suite of plugins for WordPress. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. It's been a real pleasure. Bye.